Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be with you on this Tuesday uh, here at the end of November. Hope that you had a lovely long weekend, if you got a long weekend. Um, Hope you had a lovely weekend regardless of whether you got the holiday or Friday off. And hope you've recovered from Thanksgiving, you know, whether that's overeating or just overextending yourself or maybe you didn't do any of that. But I, anyway, I, I hope the beginning of your week has gone well and that you are ready for another author interview because I have someone that I really love chatting with who has returned to the podcast. Um, if you're a longtime listener, you may have heard Priscilla Oliveris's first interview back in March when she came to talk about the second book in her Fernandez Sisters trilogy, Match to Perfection. She is back today with the third book in that trilogy, and it is called Their Perfect Melody. And it comes out today. It is uh, Their Perfect Melody's book birthday. So happy book birthday. That is always exciting. Yay to Priscilla for um, her. It's not... Release day, that's the word I'm looking for. Book birthday, release day, whatever, what have you. Which reminds me also that it is my aunt's birthday. So shout out to my Auntie Kathy, who is on her way home from India, actually, as we speak. She's been there for a week or 10 days. And so happy birthday birthday to her whenever she may or may not get around to listening to this episode after her travels. Anyway, we are here to talk with Priscilla about her newest book and a lot of other topics. It was so much fun to have her back on the podcast. Let me give you the description of their perfect melody. Growing up, Lily Maria Fernandez was affectionately known as the family wild child. The life of the party, she loved to dance, especially salsa, merengue, and oh dear, bachata. I'm so sorry. And often sang beside her father during rehearsals for his trio group. But tragedy and loss have drawn out Lily's caretaking side, compelling her to become a victim's advocate. These days, the special rhythms of the past seem like a distant memory. Until she meets Diego Reyes. A police officer with the Chicago PD, Diego has a talent, also has a talent for playing f- classical Spanish guitar, and Lily soon finds herself inspired by his passion for the music, for her, and for their shared love of familia and community. Can Diego reignite Lily's fun-loving spirit, persuade her to balance work and pleasure, and embrace her wild side once more? That, again, is the description of Their Perfect Melody, which is the uh, third book in the trilogy of the Match to Perfection trilogy. Now we get the youngest sister, Lily's story. I spoke about this trilogy Last time Priscilla was on, when she talked about the second book, um, Her Perfect Affair, and I just, I love this family. I love these, I love these books. I love these stories. The family is someone that I would love to hang out with. If they weren't fiction, I would just love to hang out with this family and get to know them. They seem, uh, they are so fun. They are so full of love and laughter. And it's not that they don't face challenges because they certainly do, but they really stick together. And they have all those great quirks that families have that are sometimes you know, annoying to the family members, <laughs> sometimes eye rolling inducing, but they love each other deep down at the bottom of it all and they support each other and they've got one another's backs. So I just really love these stories. I love the families, the family. This is, if you're looking for a really good feel good series, this is the series for you. I'm going to let Priscilla talk more about it. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to that interview with Priscilla Oliveris. Hi, Priscilla. Welcome back to the podcast. Hi, 
guys. So great to chat with you again. It's, happy holidays. Thank you. Everyone. And happy holidays to you as well. Um, so for people who maybe didn't hear you the first time you were on back in March or uh, who might need a little bit of refresher, if you could um, share a little bit about yourself before we start talking about your books. Sure. Um, I'm Priscilla Oliveira. So I, I write contemporary romance with a Latinx flavor. And I guess real quickly, because this does come up every once in a while, I've had some people say, oh, there's a typo in your bio. There's an X there. Is it supposed to be an A or an O at the end of uh, Latin? Uh, and so just a little in in insider info or, or what have you. Um, Latinx is actually currently, it's, it's a correct term. Um, it's a word um, that started being used a lot um, in on college campuses and academia, those kind of social circles, um, and it has expanded, thankfully, out um, to be more inclusive of gender identification instead of using the male or the female a uh, or o oh, at the at the end of it. Um, so Latinx is uh, is actually a valid term. It's not a typo in my bio, mm -hmm. uh, um, and a little bit more, I guess, about me and my writing. I write a lot about uh, stories with family themes, whether they're families by blood, like my Fernandez Familia in my Match to Perfection series, or if it's sometimes they're families by choice. Uh, like I, I did one book in the Paradise Key series with Thule, uh that featured Susan Meyer and Shirley Jump and Kara Jacobs, and those are four best friends, so friends who chose their familia, you know, or their family among, you know, with them. And so you'll find a lot of family themes in, in my books in, in one way or another. Uh, currently, I, I have my MFA in writing popular fiction, and so I'm English adjunct faculty at a local college. I also teach a romance writing course online for ed to go and I serve on the RWA Board of Directors. But when it's time to refill my creative and my emotional well, I enjoy, um, obviously, a lot of family, a lot of familia time. I love Zumba. It's exercise that does not feel like exercise to me. Uh, I need to do some thinking. I'll probably go out for a run. Um, any day at the beach is the perfect day, if you ask me, either there or in the stands cheering on my favorite sports teams. And um, if I really, if I've made my word count, then I get to treat myself to a nap in our in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love that. Um, and it, you have the weather for it as opposed to, you know, other people who live not in Florida this time of year. Yeah. 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 It's still hammock weather in our backyard. There are days where I'm chilling and then I remind myself there is no snow. Right. So I can deal with it. <laughs> that sounds fabulous. So we are here to talk about your newest book, which comes out um, today. This interview airs on Tuesday and it comes out today. Um before we, Yay. I know that's so exciting. Happy bir book birthday. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you. Before we talk about that, uh, let, since this is the third in a series or fourth, mm -hmm. if you count the novella um, or the short story, can you yeah. tell us a little bit about the Match to Perfection series overall? Sure. Um, the Match to Perfection series actually is my debut series as a published author. So it's one um, I, Right now, I, I can't ever imagine a time where it's not going to be like my all-time favorite. It will always hold a special place in my heart because book one, and that was His Perfect Partner. That's with the older sister, Yasmin. And uh, that's the first book that I got to hold in my hand. So it's really, really special to me. But the Master to Perfection series features the Fernandez Familia, the Fernandez family, three sisters. And in book one, you get to meet their puppy, their dad. So it's Three sisters that, just like in a lot of other families, are each different, but, you know, they have some, they share similarities. They're all three dealing with real-life issues with the help of or sometimes with the hindrance of a meddling familia. <laughs> um, and really in all three, um, I, I think, um, some, I mean, my family, I love them, but there are times where, yes, you know, I'm like, okay, I, I, I can handle this. Uh, uh, so the sisters kind of deal with that same thing as well. But they're all three throughout the course of their book. They, you know, are meeting a man, meeting a love interest who both challenges, encourages them, uh, appreciate them for the amazing woman that they are. And, and I hope that with, when readers read um, any of the books that they leave feeling like 
they've made new friends and, um, you know, characters, people that they care about. Um, I hope they appreciate the, the Latin culture that is a thread throughout, uh, um, uh, throughout, you know, all of the novels. Um, the first one is His Perfect Partner. It's a single dad and the oldest sister, Yasmin. She's um, a heroine. She's at a personal crossroads. It's two different people um, that they're, they're, they're on two different paths. Uh, and, and, and they think um, right now that at the beginning they're convinced that they're better off single. Um, but when you add in Tomas's five-year-old little daughter and uh, Papi, a, a meddling father with the best of intentions, I think you find, um, you hopefully get two, two characters who find, wind up just realizing that um, they're, they're better off with, with their perfect partner. So that's kind of his perfect partner. Um, Her Perfect Affair is book two. It's a friends to lovers romance. If you're if you're interested in in the tropes, and and this one features middle sister Rosa. She's a responsible sister. Uh, you want something done right and on time. You ask Rosa, and Rosa decides to take a leap, take a chance, and let her longtime crush, their family friend Jeremy, know that she's interested in more than friendship. And uh, their one night stand together winds up leading to a surprise pregnancy, and and this book, uh, I think, washed the Washington Post did it really well when when they gave me a really nice review. Um, Sarah McLean did, and it, she said it's a story of two good people facing difficult decisions, trying really hard to do the right thing for their child as well as their potential family that they have. Um, so. Jeremy's my cinnamon roll hero. So if you're into cinnamon roll guys, a little maybe crusty on the outside, but soft and and sweet on the inside, that's Jeremy. And then we've got Their Perfect Melody. Or or I guess you asked also, um, there is a novella that features one of the sister's cousins. And that is Holiday Home Run. And that actually is out right now. It's in the Fern Michaels Christmas Anthology, a season to celebrate. It's a short, it's a, just a 25,000 word novella, and that is their cousin, Julia, comes to visit from Puerto Rico, but um, unbeknownst to her family, she is determined to, during her visit, she's going to land a full-time job she wants to stay. And so she is all business. She is working on a fundraiser uh, for, a, it's a holiday fundraiser for a local youth organization, and she's going to do her best because she's hoping that will be her entree into getting a job. And the MC, the celebrity MC of that event is Ben Thomas. He's a former Chicago Cubs pitcher, and Ben is determined to show Julia that there's a little bit of time for both and that he can help her. He's got a game plan that will help her be successful and land that job, but also find some time for them to enjoy this holiday and, and hopefully many and many more together. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's the Fernandez Familia, and um, those books are all out now, and this Tuesday I'm super, super jazzed to share Lily's story with everyone. Yeah. I'm going to interrupt my own deep breath because we do need to take our first break of the podcast. But when we come back, we'll obviously have more with this you know, of this interview with Priscilla. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Hi, this is Sarah, host of the GSMC Book Review Podcast. As not only the host of a book review podcast, but also someone who loves to read, I get excited when I get to recommend books for you, and I have one of those today. The New York Times bestselling author of Hoot, Carl Hyacin, is back with Squirm, a wildly entertaining, slightly twisted new adventure about snakes, grizzly bears, a spy drone, a missing dad, and knowing when and when not to let things go. Squirm is recommended for readers ages 8 through 12, so if you have someone in your life who might enjoy this book or someone in your life who you already know loves Carl Hyacin, maybe you love to read together as a family. Whether you're already fans or you're looking for something new to read, I can definitely recommend Squirm by Carl Hyacin. Support for this message comes from Random House Children's Books, and Squirm is available now wherever books are sold. Thank you. 
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Before the break, Priscilla was telling us about the Match to Perfection series and more about the newest one, Their Perfect Melody. And now she's going to talk a little bit about what inspired her for Lili and Diego's story. So that is Their Perfect Melody. That's the newest one. Um, what was your inspiration for this particular story, for Lili's story? Oh, gosh, I will say I met Yasmin first, um, the older sister, and when, but when I started asking her questions about her familia, um, Lili just kind of raced onto the scene. Um, I mean, I can see Lili as a kid. I can, I can see her as a teen, and she's spunky, and she's got a joy for life, and uh, uh, she's, oh, you ask any of her older sisters, and she's just like a big kid, but but I just knew that there was there there was something deep or something that maybe she was keeping or hiding from her sisters from Poppy, like a true a, a true pain that the, the girls lost their mom when when they were the older two in high school and Lily Wood was still in elementary school um, and I just she spoke to me um, to to kind of scratch below her surface and as soon as I found out about her caretaking side and. And the reason she is why she is, uh, you know, to try to, she, you know, she became the family jokester to try to help her siblings and her and her puppy through the loss of of their mom. And um, so, as soon as I knew about this caretaking side of Lily that that comes out throughout the course of the two books, and you realize what by book three what. Because in the first two books, she's a college kid. And in her book, she is out in the world and she's working as a victim's advocate. And things that have happened in her life have led her to that. But I knew then that I kind of needed a hero who would understand how important that is to her. Um, but she's got these rose-colored glasses on her, you know, perched on the end of her nose. And sometimes it's good, but she can get herself into some situations that aren't aren't, aren't as safe and and. Diego came to me, and, and, and they balance each other in what I hope is a beautiful way. Um, I, I'm, I'm, Diego's like my, my, my favorite. I hate to say that because I feel like I'm cheating on Thomas <laughs> and Jeremy, and, and I, could not, I could not pick a favorite of the sisters um, or, or, the, you know, or add Julia in that mix because they're like my, my best friends or like my girls. Um, but I just, I'm super excited for, for people to get to meet Diego. Mm-hmm. And this book is, as I said, it's the third in the series, but um, there's a bit of a time jump. Mm -hmm. So talk about your decision to yeah. to jump ahead a bit. Well, I mean, like I said, Lily was in college in books uh, one and two. And uh, there's something that happens in college that's kind of alluded to in Rose's book uh, that kind of leads that, you know, really shines a light on the path that Lily wants to take. Um, but I wanted her... I wanted to show her as the mature, uh, I mean, she's she's still, you know, 20s, mid-20s, so it's not that she's this mature woman. She's got a lot of living and, and growing up and, and learning and, and stuff still ahead of her with, with Diego, but I wanted to show her out in the world and um, more, a, a young woman finding her place and, and carving her niche. That was important to me. All three of the sisters are... Um, I, I think like a lot of a lot of us, um, and I don't want to just say a lot of women, just a lot of individuals uh, um, trying to find what's the right place for us in this world or in our community or um, finding trying to find a way to make a difference in a positive, in a good way um, in their lives, but also in the lives around them. And, and so I felt that Lily needed, I needed that time jump to take Lily out of college. She had been working in the field. She had experienced um, adult life uh, um, so that she was coming to the table when she meets her hero when she meets Diego they're both they both lived enough that they know who they are and they're at a place where when the opportunity to begin a relationship um, you know a healthy relationship they kind of know what they're bringing to the table mm -hmm. and you've you've talked a bit about both Lily and Diego what about them and their relationship do you think might resonate with your readers Oh, goodness. Um, well, I will say they're both passionate about what they do. Lily, I think I've already said she's a victim's advocate working um, with, uh, you know, domestic abuse. She works in a clinic in the Humboldt Park area in Chicago. All of the books take 
take place either in Chicago or in a fictional suburb of Chicago. In in in, in book three, Lily is living in in Chicago, and Diego is actually back. He's born and raised in the Humboldt Park area of Chicago. It's a uh, an area with a heavy um, Latinx uh, community, and so Diego left for the army. You know, joined the military came back home, finished college online, and became a cop. And, and both of them are determined to, they're, they're focused on making a difference in the lives of the people that they serve and the people that they, they live with. Um, the issue is they both, they both go about it in completely different ways. Mm-hmm. Lily, Lily will tell you she lives in the gray area, you know, as a victim's advocate, you know, focused in, you know, social work, the, the, the gray, there's no black and white. There's a lot of emotion involved and you got to look at that Diego. Um, he's had, uh, there's some family drama, you know, his, his sister started in high school down a really wrong path and she made a lot of wrong decisions that kind of tore up his family, um, uh, led kind of to, you know, his, his mom's passing and, so Diego is, throughout the course of this book, he's trying to figure out, can he reconnect with a sister who he can't control, um, that he may want good things for, but in his perspective, you can't, what he's learned is you can't, you can't make someone make the right choice. They have to want to make the right choice. And Lily is still determined that she can help other people make the right choices. And I think ultimately what I try to do is for the two of them to learn how they can balance each other out. And it's not that they're, one of them is wrong or right. It's that looking, looking at life through both of their lenses, helping each other and supporting each other, you know, they can both do good together. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm hoping that that's a universal um, desire that, that, you know, readers will connect with and see people maybe just like them or at least people with similar desires and wants and needs as them just living a regular life, you know, trying to make right decisions even when they're in really, really bad situations. Yeah. And so you've mentioned their their careers. Lily is a victim advocate. Diego is a, a cop. Did you do any research or anything on those careers, or did you kind of have an idea where you wanted that those storylines to go? Um, yes, I did. Actually, I have a good friend who is a victims advocate here in Florida. She was she was great. Um, you know. Uh, asking questions and bouncing ideas off of. She also really made sure that I knew, you know, hey, here in Florida, some things could be different. So I did call out um, to a woman's shelter uh, uh, out in the Chicago area to kind of run some scenarios by, to, you know, ask some questions, that, you know, about different situations, kind of how different things would handle would be handled. I also, I mean, obviously, I Googled and, and used the Internet, but I also did call out to... Uh, um, one of the local precincts in Chicago and speak to like a, someone in the public advocacy office. Um, I can't remember if that's like right now the right term, but one one of those offices and um, to ask mm-hmm. some basic questions again about procedure uh, um, things to to try my best to to make sure that I I didn't um, that that I followed. You know, there was not anything that was completely unbelievable or that the situations, maybe like the verbiage, the terms that they would use, um, that kind of thing, uh, because I don't have anybody um, close to me that that is a cop. So I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't just relying on like the Chicago PD TV show, which I love, (laughs) uh, um, you know, that kind that kind of thing, because you always hear, oh, gosh, it's not like that in real life. Right. So um, so I tried my best to you know, rely on, sure, what I see on the television and, and stuff, what I like, but a lot of research online, um, watching videos of, of uh, you know, cops, uh, you know, on, on patrol and, and things like that to try my best to get a feel for what it might be like, what the, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So this family, the sisters, um, I have loved getting to know all of them and watching them grow and now, you know, watching their children and, and all of the evolution that's gone <laughs> on in this family. Um, how How is it to be done writing this series? Um, I will say this, that I have a really hard time thinking I'm done like in, in the 
anthology in, in the novella Holiday Home Run with Julia, she mentions that she has three brothers. And so while I'm not working on their stories right now, I I would not be completely truthful if I did not say that I I have I have in my heart I will write Matin and and Angels and oh gosh seeing her brother just flew out of my head but I I will write those brothers stories at some point in part because I'm a huge baseball fan so I would love to write a um a story or a series that where they were ball players or they used to be ball players I had so much fun uh writing Ben and um for for the novella and I, I did a lot of shopping, uh, like when I was searching for what his where his home in Wrigleyville. I had so much fun shopping for homes that I could not afford, but <laughs> right. Ben could afford as a, as a baseball player. So, I right now, yes, I am. I'm diving into an, another series for Kensington, um, but I'm also getting ready to write a short novella for um, one of the groups that I'm on on Facebook, the Fiction from the Heart Ladies. We are working on an anthology, and uh, my novella is actually going to feature Lourdes, Diego's sister. So I'll get to write a little bit more about the sisters in in that novella, and hopefully that will be just another stepping stone, another jumping point off to at some point be able to write Julia's brother's story. So I, I have not completely said goodbye to the Fernandez family, and I think it's because I just I don't know that I can. But, um, but I am super excited to be getting to know a new family. Um, I think one of uh, that is a new series that I'm going to be writing for Kensington, set in Key West. Um, it's where I went to junior high and high school, so I'll get to revisit my old stomping grounds for this series, and it's um, the Navarro family. Um, they have an older brother who's already married, so that the the series will feature, um, I have story ideas for two brothers and a sister. They're firefighters, EMS, um, one's a, a boat captain on the side. She's a physical trainer also on the side, and Enrique, the younger brother, is also an artist. You know, there's a, a lot going on, and, I, and I'm just getting ready. I'm starting book one in that for Kensington. Okay. Thank you for that. I'm going to jump in here so we can take our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking a little bit more about that anthology that Priscilla mentioned earlier, A Season to Celebrate. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. If you've paid any attention to the calendar, you know it's almost December, which means it's almost holiday season. And so if you are someone who likes holiday-themed movies, or especially holiday-themed books, then you're definitely going to want to listen to this next segment about uh, the anthology that Priscilla is a part of called A Season to Celebrate. You have, uh, you've mentioned and talked a bit about Julia's story, which is in A Season to Celebrate. Can you tell us a little bit more mm -hmm. about that anthology? Sure. That anthology, it features four novellas. The first, obviously, The Fabulous Fern Michaels, 
Um, it's her anthology. She puts out an anthology every year, and Kensington invites um, three other authors to participate. The other two authors are fabulous. It's Donna Kaufman and Kate Pierce. And I believe their, um, yes, yeah, so like their stories are also kind of attached to other stories that they've written before. So you get to, so those who have read them before um, will be familiar with some of the characters. Some who are new, they'll introduce some characters that hopefully you'll want to go out and, and check out. And then my novella is the fourth one in the book. It's Holiday Home Run, and it features Julia Fernandez. She's um, one of the sister's cousins, like I said, visiting from Puerto Rico. She's an event planner. And her family thinks she's here with an internship visiting her cousins, um, and she will return back to the island and take over her mother's catering business. But she really wants a little bit more than that. She she wants to come and find her own her own dream. And so Julia is interning. She is um, as an event planner working on this holiday soiree. It's a fundraiser for the Chicago Youth Association. And all of the funds are actually going to go specifically to a youth center in Humboldt Park. It happens to be the same youth center that Diego and Lily volunteer at in their story a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said before, Julia is all business. She wants this to be the best fundraiser they've they've ever had because she's hoping she's hoping that it will be her entree into a full time position in some way, like through her networking. Enter. Our hero, Ben Thomas, um, Ben had to retire early from base. Uh, uh, he had he was a rising star in, in baseball, um, but he had some injuries and he just uh, couldn't recover. So he was forced to retire early. And unlike Julia, who is um, the young, uh, you know, a sister with three brothers who have lived and breathed baseball. So for her, she's excited to be off the island this winter and, and missing winter ball and, and, and the hoopla and, and, and all of that. So unlike Julia, who's trying to find a new place to kind of maybe get out from under her her family for a little bit, Ben is really missing his baseball family. That was his true connection to to family for, you know, his childhood into his adult life. And uh, um, so um, it's a novella, so it's obviously a little bit faster tracked within the romance. Um, And um, but I think I mentioned earlier the. The, the kind of the gist of it is Ben, um, you know, Ben knows that Julian needs, wants to take things slow, but he's convinced that um, he, he can come up with a plan that he's got a way to help her get what she wants. And that's, you know, a kick butt fundraiser, but also find time maybe for a little romance so they can figure out if, if you know, they can continue on together. Mm-hmm. So if people wanted to read them chronologically, then uh, Julia's story would come between Rosa's and Lily's, correct? Yes. Like, actually, in um, if you if you get them all and you know, I'm, and here's where I'm kind of worried, I don't want to reveal too much, but uh, um, Diego is actually the guitarist that plays the music for the event that Julia is planning. Okay. And so I did have to try to, in my plotting, I had to figure out, wow, something has to happen that Lily can't meet him because she doesn't meet him until her book, which is supposed to be like six months later. Right. So I did have to, like in my plotting, it, it helped that I was kind of, uh, I said, you know, my, my revisions for Lily's book came back to me after I had written the novella so any you know I was able to add Julia in there and because the way publishing works I was already working on Lily's story when I was presented the opportunity to be part of the anthology and they did ask for it to be in my story world and I couldn't invent another sister uh, so in came a cousin and um, but so you will see that like in uh, the anthology what What I wanted to try to do was also introduce some of the readers who would be new to me to the Fernandez family. So Julia lives with Lily. So there are a couple scenes where, you know, you get to meet Lily. Um, They have thanks. They, you know, they have a Thanksgiving meal uh, with, with the, all of the sisters and, and, and their extended, you know, their extended family. Um, And then when you get to Lily's book, now Julia is living, you know, in Chicago, she's no longer living with Lily. But she's in Chicago, so there there is a scene or two where Julia is there with the sisters as well, because she's now been brought into 
into the um, you know the scene, whereas in book one and two, Julia had not arrived to, in Chicago yet. Right. Okay. Thank you for that. You yeah. also mentioned the 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 anthology that you're working on with one of your face group. Facebook groups, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. just made up a new yeah. word. Um, you're involved in a couple of groups. Um, I know that you are active with um, the Four Chicas. Do you want to talk a little bit about that group and what you're you're up to? Sure. Yeah. So Four Chicas chat is um, all of the fa the Facebook groups that I'm in. They're they're um, private groups, so they're not open to the public. That just anybody can, but. Every, people are welcome to join. You just, you know, request. So the Four Chicas chat is one of the groups that um, I'm really active on on, on social media. We, we we also really use the hashtag Latinx Rom as a way to try to help promote um, and kind of signal boost fellow Latinx romance authors. The Four Chicas we are Mia Sosa, Alexis Daria. Sabrina Soul and and then uh, me, and we're all contemporary Latinx romance authors in our. We like to say it's our casa, like our house uh, uh, on on Facebook. So we say the door's always open. There's cold drinks in the fridge. Grab something and sit down on the couch and come and chat with us. And we talk about yes, our writing. We do talk about um, Latino you know issues every now and again. But we talk about the books we're reading that we love, the television shows. Um, there was a Hallmark calendar, you know, for the Hallmark movies that are going on. Nice. Um, it's really it, it's like uh, I said, it's a place where we kind of like to let our ha hair down and just get to know other authors, other writers, other readers, other people who are interested in mm. you know the the same, similar things that we like to chat about. About. Um, and I would say the same thing, the, the other two groups that I'm in, one is the Fiction from the Heart. That is, uh, there are 12 of us in that group, and I would start naming them, but then I'm kind of nervous. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, if, ready, go, uh, name them all. <laughs> I know. Okay, let me let me see. I feel like if I was a mom with, with 11 kids, because I'm the 12. So let me give it a try. It's Donna Kaufman and Kwana Jackson and Liz Talley and Jamie Beck and Tracy Brogan, and Sonali Dev, and Sally Kilpatrick, and Falgani Kathari, and Virginia Cantra, and Hope Ramsey, and there is one more. Who, who am I saying? I said Quana and Falgani, and Jamie, and oh my goodness, I'm going to have to like look on my computer right now because I'm going to be totally sad that I'm, I'm forgetting somebody. Well, I'm impressed. Did I, I mean... say 10 or did I say 11? Um, I forgot to count, so I'm terrible. I can't even help you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, um, and then I'm also in, I'm a new, I just newly was invited to join Racy Reads. And um, Racy Reads uh, is a Facebook group. And at first I thought, ooh, I, I don't really, my, my books are more um, on the, lighter side maybe i'm trying to get one jalapeno pepper if there's like four jalapeno peppers in the heat level <laughs> um, um but but really the race you read is um like books that make your heart race mm, okay. and so there's you know there's a wide variety of of authors and um and um I'm not going to be able to find this on Facebook and talk at the same time. I'll be like, I'm going to say something wrong. Um, so, um, so those three groups, but they're, they're both, you know, just click to join. Um, there are places where, uh, especially Racy Reads, it's for readers to get to know all the authors that are there. That's like 36 authors and I just joined. So I'm totally not going to try to <laughs> mention I won't, all I won't of those names. You. I would totally, <laughs> I would totally kind of gas, gas that all up. Um, Oh, it is Barbara O'Neill. Oh, my gosh. I don't know how I forgot Barbara O'Neill because I just read, not just read, a couple months ago, I read The Lost Recipe for Happiness, um, one of the most beautiful books I've read. I, I had to message her. I said, okay, message, please forgive the fangirl gush. Um, however, this book was absolutely beautiful. Um, as a writer, it makes me hope that I can write as well someday and move a reader like you moved me. But so Barbara O'Neill is the 11th Fiction from the Heart. Um, and, and so thus far, I've been mostly active in Fiction from the Heart. And we're going to do, an, like I said, an anthology. Our, we're shooting for next June. It's kind of like a second chance brides theme. And uh, so my story will feature Diego's 
sister Lourdes and her kind of second chance. Like I said earlier, she's made a lot of wrong choices in mm-hmm. life and she has a lot of regrets. And it's a, she, so she's at a place where she's, you know, in a, she's in a good place finally. Um, this story is two years after Lily and Diego's. Um, and uh, so it's kind of like a double second chance. She's hoping to give herself a second chance at, at leading a good life. And it's a reunion love story with her high school sweetheart um, who has moved back to Chicago. Um, and so all of the fiction from the heart novellas in that, um, in that anthology will have some type of second chance um, scenario with a wedding also involved, whether it's the main characters or they're at a wedding or something like that. So m- mine, if I can do it right, it's Lily and Diego's wedding. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to write that one as well. Yeah. Um, I kind of went off, off track. You were asking me about Facebook. Sorry. No, no, <laughs> you, you talked about all of your groups. Um, I mean, we initially started with the four chicas chat, but it, then you talked about yeah. your other groups, so I don't think you went too crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, is there is there <laughs> anything else that you wanted to say about Four Chicas Chat, or did? Uh, no, I think we're we're just um, we've gotten some really our our goal with uh, with kind of forming our group and 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 the and the four of us together really um, they're within within romance within publishing I mean within the world in general but you know in our little corner of the world. There's a, there's a lot of there's been a lot of talk for years and it has kind of crescendoed now about the need for more diverse romance whether you know in the form of diverse characters on the pages of our books diverse authors getting an opportunity to have their voices heard and um, the four chicas we came about what right before my book debuted I I wanted to kind of pitch the idea to HEA USA Today and thank you to them um, about kind of doing an interview with four Latinx ROM authors or four Latina authors at that at the, and um, they said yes and from that interview we just but we all kind of realized we similar goals, similar desire to write great romance novels, um, Some, sometimes with, with Latinx characters, mine t- always are, I think Sabrina Souls typically always are, Alexis and Mia um, write some with, some, some without, um, so, uh, but it's mostly just a place, we, we've come together and we've created the Four Chicas as a place of support um, for for readers and writers of diverse romance, but really just of great romance stories, you know, because people have asked me, well, but if you write with Latinx characters, if I'm not, if I'm not Latinx, am I going to identify? And, and my answer always is we doesn't matter our background. Um, We all love and and need and want um, and, and the, the essence of the romance. Is there a little Spanglish in there? Yes. Mm-hmm. Because my characters, you know, speak in Spanglish thus far, uh, uh, you know, and I try really hard to immediately make some kind of, uh, you know, either the response or make it clear to the non-Spanish speaker what has just been said, whether it's a word, whether it's a quick phrase, you know, when Yasmin tells Lili, cállate la boca. Ah, and if you don't speak Spanish, you have to wait until after the break to find out what that actually means. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships.
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I don't normally cut things off mid-sentence like that, but it seemed like a nice place to, to quit. It's not exactly a cliffhanger, but I did leave you hanging a little bit if you don't speak Spanish. I am not going to try to say the phrase that Priscilla said before we went to break because I will butcher it. But uh, as we get back into the interview, she will tell you what that phrase means. Lily. Um, response, uh, don't tell me to shut my mouth you know, <laughs> right. or something like that. I've learned so some, that I've learned a couple believable. of Spanish swear words that I'm, I have no idea how to pronounce oh. them, but you know, I've learned how to spell them. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly just like oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Diego yes. tends to say damn a lot, um, it seems like. He does. He does. Um, and, and I will say it's, um, I will say that there's a, a, a word in Puerto Rico, like in the, in the Caribbean, we say coño. Um, which if we it means damn, but it's also in a way like uh, if 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 I saw a friend and I was like, damn girl, you look good, you know. So I would say, oye, coño, nana, te ves bien, you know, like uh, uh, so. Not it, it, it's a curse word, but it's also like a, it, it, you know, I stub my toe and ay coño. So not always like a really really negative, bad, ugly swear word. Right um, in Puerto Rico, that's how. Um, but I know I do have to be conscious. Like that is a word that has me has another meaning in other places. So when Diego says "coño," I tried really hard to not just repeat "damn," like you know, because we don't. I I don't speak in Spanish and then repeat it in English in my head. But say you know have have say something so that the reader understands what "coño" means to him, because it could mean something different to somebody else mm -hmm. uh, from you know not not in the Caribbean. Um, but I, but it is believe it's not believable to have a Puerto Rican character who doesn't say that. Although, like I noticed, my my the first two sisters had it, and Lily did say it. Um, but uh, uh, because of that double meaning, you know, I kind I I gave her other words to say, but I could not not have Diego say it right. as a cop, from, right. you know, with a life on the streets. I'm like, I'm sorry, he looked in a kid eating. He has to say it. So. Uh, uh, so there you go. <laughs> and and back to your initial point about, you know, will I identify the with the characters if I don't have, you know, a, a Latinx mm -hmm. background? Well, uh, I can say for myself that I do not have a Latinx background and I love this family. <laughs> um, I love the characters. And there's a lot of things that remind me of, you know, certain parts of my own family. So we might not have the same culture, but there you know, mm -hmm. family elements can cross over in a lot of different areas. So there's things that people will recognize I, I hope so I think most definitely one of my one of my best friends one of my longtime friends her my youngest and, and her daughter and, and, and another family and another girl they were best friends in kindergarten first and second grade and then military moves kind of moved us away uh, but but this mom um, she's one of my best friends and she's Irish and you know so she and, and we'll talk about she's like you know I don't really know all that you're saying but the, the but our, our families are so much alike in, in so many, so many ways, you know, like we, we talk loud and we, and we fight hard, but we love hard. And we, uh, you know, like my baby brother was just visiting and, um, and actually I was just going to post on Twitter, but I'll, uh, um, our, a picture that I took with them. I was like, you know, Hey, we may, we don't always agree or we may not always agree, but we always love each other. And I know no matter what he's, he's got my back. And, and that's what my, my girlfriend, you know, was saying, you know, she from a strong Irish background, there the similarities between the cultures. And I think the bottom line is we all we all want to live a good life and and we all want someone who understands who we are um and accepts us even at our worst, but maybe challenges us to be better when we're at our worst mm -hmm. and is there at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've talked about a lot. Um, we've talked about Facebook. So speaking of Facebook and social media, where can people find you online in terms of website, social media, any place they can find you? Sure. I try to keep it really simple. And I know that Priscilla is a difficult word, can be a difficult word to spell. I get a lot of misspelling. So my social media, my website, uh, my Instagram and my Twitter account are all Pris. P R I S Oliveras. Um, my last name is like Oliver, and then A S. So you can my my Twitter handle, my Insta handle are at Pris Oliveras. My website is simple www.prisoliveras.com. 
oliveras.com. And on Facebook, my author page is, um, it's usually, I think it's you know, like facebook.com forward slash or whatever, I, that slash that's bending forward or leaning forward. <laughs> and then Chris Oliveras. Uh, so you can find me. I try to keep it consistent, but keep to the Pris, and, and that way, hopefully, less spelling errors. Right. <laughs> but I would love, I would love to see you. I'm, I'm really active on Twitter, um, Insta, Instagram, and Insta Stories. Um, I will say, if you are in the Gainesville, Florida area, um, this coming Saturday, December first, I'll be having um, the first live reading of their perfect melody at the um, headquarters in the Latchville County Library at, at 2 p.m. So, so um, if you're in, in this area, I just posted that uh, yesterday and this morning on Facebook. Okay. Uh, so I don't know where your listeners are, but uh, if, if anybody's in the Gainesville area and you want to come out to the library at 2, we'd love to see you. Perfect. Thank you. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to just mention now in terms of your books or writing or anything at all? Um, I guess really I would just like to say um, a, a special thank you to family and friends and the readers out there who I haven't gotten to meet yet, who I would love to meet someday. Uh, it was just over a year ago. My first book came out uh, October. It was September 27th last year. And so it's kind of been a really busy year of writing and revising and trying to learn how to promote market and, and all of that. And um, I'm just sincerely thankful to everyone who, um, who's who been so supportive in, in buying my books or telling their friends or loved ones about their books. It, it really means um, a, a lot to me. I'm um, trying really hard to make everyone proud. And I just, um, I know that any any little successes that I've had have been because of the love and the support of romance readers and all of the people in Romance Landia who are just incredible. And so I just want to say a, a special thank you to to all of you know everyone who's been so supportive. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Well, I also want to thank you for taking time out of um, what is sure, I'm sure has been a busy holiday weekend uh, to come and talk about your newest <laughs> book. Thank you so much. Oh, I really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure talking with you and, and for your listeners. I wish everyone the happiest of holidays. If you celebrate Christmas, Feliz Navidad and uh, Prospero Año Nuevo. Happy New Year to everyone. I, I hope you're this holiday. I wish you um, lots of blessings, lots of love, and lots of reading time. Mm, that's perfect. And we wish the same thing for you. Thank you. Take care. And once again, I want to thank Priscilla for taking the time out of her weekend to come and talk to me about her newest book, which comes out today. It is out. You can get it uh, called Their Perfect Melody. It's it's almost the holidays. You should treat yourself and just get the whole trilogy. And while you're treating yourself, then go ahead and get that anthology, A Season to Celebrate, so you can have Julia's story as well. You need the whole family, I think. Just just spoil yourself and make it a set. Um, at any rate, uh, all of the books are now out and you can get them. So go ahead, get them for yourself, get them for friends, get them for your neighbor or, you know, I don't know, get them for your pets. Just go out and get them. They're great. Thank you so much to Priscilla. Thank you for joining me as always. I really appreciate it. I love to hear your feedback. So hit me up on social media and let me know what you think. Who would you like to hear on the podcast? Is there any books that you would like for me to read and, and talk about? Love to hear from listeners. So find me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. In the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Please join me again on Thursday. But in the meantime, go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. 
Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.